Hi everyone, Kim Schofield here back with another video on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, today's project is going to be a little bit different in that I am not going to be walking through a step-by-step -step for the complete creation of this project, which is a mini album. You can see a few of the, the cover and a few of the inside pages here. But what we will be talking about are the steps that I took to create the album. So some of the specific things needed if you wanted to recreate this. So um, this is just a heavy chipboard album that I have painted um, and um, added some stenciling to, and then you can see the inside pages here. So during the video, we're gonna talk through how I did the spine and then how all the pages are inserted into the book. It's really simple. There's no binding actually. I only just use a heavy glue. Um, and then you can see here that I'm showing you, so my glue is coming apart. So um, you could use a stitch binding to make this a little bit stronger. So everything is just one piece. So this is one tag, um, and you can just see it's been um, folded and scored. One piece of paper there, that smaller piece of paper, and then one large piece of paper. So that's all it is. It's one piece with a score line, two score lines in the middle to kind of create that binding. And then you could do some kind of stitch binding right there in the middle if you wanted to, which would hold it a little bit better um, than just the glue. Uh, I think I just used even a tape runner on this. I'm not even sure I used some actual glue. So glue would probably hold it a little bit better. So, but it doesn't have that many pages. Um, you could certainly add as many as you want. So we're gonna talk about how I created the cover and then also how I did this gesso resist technique that you see right here. Um, and then this just has some decorative paper and I printed out my pages and added some um, stamping with my photos. So uh, really kind of quick and easy. You need to put a little Velcro there to, to hold that close, but um, you can see I've even used some die cuts of butterflies that are on there but, uh, and some buttons to, um, for the little opening there. So let's talk about how I created the album. This is just kind of like a small six inch long piece of paper. So all you'd wanna do is measure over to whatever size that you wanted the, um, your album cover to be. And then you want to uh, measure over about a half an inch and create another score line. Now, please don't pay attention to my faulty measuring here because I'm terrible at math. Yes, even simple math. <laughs> and um, I didn't quite measure exact, but um, all, you know, all you're gonna do is whatever size you want your cover to be, um, add a half an inch for the spine, and then make sure your back album is the same. And if you have to do what I do and you know trim off a little bit to make it even, that works too. So that's it for the spine. And that's what I did for every piece of paper that was in inserted into the book. Um, now I'm gonna use some gel medium and I'll show you how I covered the entire book. Uh, this is really simple. It's a great way to use up extra scraps of paper because all I have done is take a bunch of scrap paper and cut it into random sizes and shapes. Um, some, um, you know, rectangular, some square, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the, the um, color of the paper is or anything or, you know, the different weight. That doesn't matter because all of it's going to be covered up. You could even use washi tape for a little bit of interesting texture. All you're really looking for is getting some die cuts or paper pieces, whatever you want in the background that's going to create texture once we add the paint. But really, the sky's the limit. You can um, do whatever you want. I really love this idea because it uses up scrap paper. Sometimes when you are working on projects or you have a mini album or cards, you end up with all these little pieces of paper that I tend to hold on to and then I find I never use them again and I have a ton of them. Um, and you also want to layer. So create multiple layers um, of the card. You know, you don't want everything lining up. You really want it to be pretty random. And then you're going to completely dry that. And then I am going to add a layer of gesso on top. And that's because I'm going to be working with paint. And this, of course, will help to kind of uh, push all that those different colored papers into the background as well. So this is a Crafters Workshop Gesso. is is in a different bottle, but that's because I just want it in a pourable form instead of in the uh, jar. And then I'll just dry that. 
And then I'll add some, I'm using some of the Crafters Workshop paint. Uh, you could use any acrylic paint that you have. And I'm using some of this beautiful green shade and a little bit of gold. And I'm going to go on with a very thin first coat, and I'll show you why I am doing that. And this is when you can really start to see the texture of those papers. I love this green. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm not looking for thick coverage here. I want very thin. Um, you could almost water it down, too, if you wanted to, um, because I, I don't want it to be real dark. So just one layer of that green. And I'm going to make sure that is completely dry. And then I'm going to rinse my brush. And make sure my brush is very dry. So I'm just drying that off on paper towel, picking up a little bit of the gold and then kind of dry brushing that gold over the edges. And if you really work on this, you can really work around all those little pieces of paper and you can really start to see that pop out. You can do that with a dark ink too. So this really adds a beautiful shine onto the background. And now I'm going to, so this is the reason why I, I um, wanted that lighter shade, because now I'm using a sponge and I've got my stencil. And I am picking up some of that paint with the sponge. We don't want to saturate the sponge too much, but now you kind of will end up with this tone on tone look on the cover. And so that's why I wanted a very thin layer so that our next layer there you can actually see. And I'm not, not stenciling every bit of uh, my design here, just picking and choosing uh, little areas like that because I don't want the whole thing covered. And then I'll just make sure that this is completely dry. And of course, you could add embellishments on this, a title for your album, anything like that. Um, I didn't do too much on the cover of mine because I really like the design, but you could add a photo on there or anything. And so there's really like a mini uh, album cover, super quick and easy to do. And then you could paint the inside as well. And then you could use a white Sharpie pen or a white gel pen, which I used on mine and just add some little decorations or you could trace that design, anything like that to just add a little bit more to your album cover. So that is it for the cover of the album. Quick and easy, right? So now I wanna also show you a quick technique for how I did that tag. And you'll need a baby wipe for this. And I'm just gonna pick up the rest of this paint. You could put this on with a paintbrush, but I have a little bit of paint left over, so I figured I would use that up. And this is the Cubix stencil. And now I'm coming in with a baby wipe and rubbing. And you'll notice I'm rubbing even uh, beyond where that paint is because the wet paint will actually, the baby wipe will pick it up and move it. So that's pretty cool. And then I can even clean my stencil off on the back side of my tag or another part and you can get an, even another impression. So that's the way the tag was created, super quick and easy. And this is great for doing backgrounds on art journals or for cards. And you can see there I have those two little people and that is another stencil and I just used black archival ink to add that. So here's our gesso resist technique for my last two pages. I've got a piece of um, mixed media paper another sponge and I just have some white gesso and I'm going to go ahead and kind of pounce on the gesso through this stencil and you want to have a, a thin coverage here you don't want to get too gloopy with your gesso or paint because we want this to be able to dry quickly and so you won't see that see the design very well because it's white on white you can see a little bit there the shine but you wanna make sure that this is completely dry before you go on to your next piece. And you can do this gesso resist technique with stamps. You can stamp in gesso and do this. Stenciling, little splots if you want, um, like little dots of gesso. That will work with, um, this technique will work with any of those. Any way you wanna use gesso, you can, you can do this technique. So I have a couple of distress ink pads and I'm gonna smoosh some color down on my nonstick craft sheet. You can also do this technique with distress stains. That will also work. So I have some colors there and then I'm gonna add some water. So this gets nice and watery. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place my piece. This is my piece that's covered with the gesso right down um, in that wet ink. And you can already start to see that design pop out. Um, darker colors will sometimes make that uh, gesso stand out a little bit more than the lighter colors will. 
but you can still see that design really well. And then I love to use my heat tool to move those pooled areas of ink around a little bit. And then of course you could uh, put this back down in the remaining ink if you want. And I'm just adding a little bit of water to get that ink to move around. So it's not all those little spot, spotty dots. And then I'm just gonna dry that completely. And this is a great technique to do anything on the, this works really well on the background of a tag or an art journal page or any way that you wanna use gesso. The gesso will always resist uh, distress ink. Um, I haven't tried it with the oxides yet. I don't know if it will react the same because the oxides are a fusion ink, so they have some pigment ink in them. Um, and they might be a little too opaque. I'm not exactly sure, uh, but that would be a good test. I'll have to try that out. So love those drips on there, just awesome. And if you want to ink up the edges, you can, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick here. So this will just deepen up those colors a little bit. And this is, you know, if you like the look of the darker edge. which I do, because I like brown and everything. So um, I'm taking a very damp baby wipe. I had, uh, I picked up kind of a, not a super clean baby wipe. So you wanna make sure it's very clean and just barely damp. You very gently go over this. Um, that'll remove any kind of ink that's sitting on top of that gesso and it'll make that design pop out a little bit more. And then you wanna dry this completely before you go on to any layering or stamping on top. So that's it. That's pretty much the techniques for the book. You can see there that gesso resist on those pages and then how we put together the uh, cover. So thanks so much. Please visit the Crafters Workshop blog for full photos of the rest of this album. And you can see the link to my blog there. Uh, happy crafting.